everyone! Happy Friday! <laughs> How are you guys? It's so good to be back hanging out with all of you again. Let me click a little button here so I can see all of you. There we go. <laughs> Happy Friday! Let's get started making some art. So go grab whatever art supplies you have. It doesn't matter. Pencil, paper, markers, crayons, whatever you feel like because you're the artist, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm so excited to get to spend some time making art with you guys today. Oh, Mr. Juan says he likes my new sign. See, we've got to be very professional. <laughs> and let me go ahead and set it out of the way though now so we can get started making some art. How has your week been? Anybody do anything interesting this week? I hope you managed to get outside some. It's beautiful out there. I've been going for lots of walks, looking for inspiration, things to draw and paint. There's my nice white piece of paper ready to be turned into a piece of art. You have some too? All right. Well, I came across a book a few days ago and when I saw it and I read it, I immediately thought of all of you. So I wanted to start off by reading you this story and then we will make some art about it, okay? So this book is called, I Believe I Can. And if there's one thing that I hope that you guys learn from all of your classes with me and all the, t all the classes you have with all the other awesome teachers that, that you work with, I hope that you really learn the message of this story. Okay, so pay attention. We're going to read it together and then we're going to make some art. Okay, I believe I can. I love that girl with the balloons. We're, we're going to come back to that. Okay, this book is all about using your imagination, which is my very favorite thing to do. Okay, let me hold it so you guys can see. I can sail like mighty ships, like the oceans, I run deep. I can stretch just like the Alps until I reach my highest peak. I love the, this one. I can charge just like a train, like a rocket, I'll ignite. Like a star, I can project my brightest shine against the night. <laughs> oh, somebody said cute nails. <laughs> Thank you. I am like the lion's roar. I am like a dragon's flames. I'm worthy because I'm me. And there is value to my name. I can build just like a brick. I keep going like a clock. I can hold just like cement. I can last just like a rock. Grounded firm, I'm like the soil. Like the sky, I'm boundless too. When I believe in myself, there's simply nothing I can't do. Like the hero, I am brave and face my fears despite my fright. Because I know I'm not alone and in the end, I'll be all right. Sometimes I am right, and sometimes I am wrong, but even when I make mistakes, I learn from them to make me strong. I may not win at all I do. I may experience defeat, like that kind of wobbly cake, <laughs> but I'll dust off and try again to be the best that I can be. I know my power lies within. 
There's nothing that can hold me down. There is light within my smile. There is voice within my sound. My presence matters in this world. My life is worthy. There's a plan. I know I can do anything if only I believe I can. Ta-da! That's it. I love that book. I Believe I Can by Grace Byers. I, and I really do think that the message of that book is true. If you believe in yourself, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Not everybody knows that. I didn't know that myself when I was growing up. So it's really important to let everybody know. And like I said, as soon as I saw this book, I thought of you guys and I wanted to read that to you. So I'm going back now to my favorite picture, which was this girl with all those colorful balloons. And that's what I'm going to make a painting of today. So if you wanna, if you wanna draw the same thing, you can follow along with me. We can all draw her. But if you have a different idea, if that story inspired you and made you want to draw something else, you draw whatever you want, okay? Like always, there are no rules in art. You do anything that you feel like, okay? But I'm going to draw her. And so one of the things that I always do when I'm first starting out working on a drawing or a painting is to look for shapes, right? You can draw anything in the world if you just break it down into simple shapes. So let's look at her. We're gonna start with drawing her, and then we'll do the balloons. What shapes do you see on that girl? Any idea? I'm gonna start with her head, which is kind of a circle shape. That's how I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm gonna put her a little bit off to the side so I've got room for all those balloons. Okay, so that's kind of like the shape, the big shape for her head and her hair. And then I'm going to draw another oval inside of that for her face. <laughs> right now she kind of looks like, like an olive. <laughs> but don't worry, it's going to look like her soon. <laughs> I have confidence. I, I believe I can do it. <laughs> and I believe you can too. All right, let's look at her dress now. To me, that looks kind of like a wobbly triangle. So that's how I'm gonna draw it. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna give her a little neck first, and then we'll just do this kind of big triangle. Little wobbly on the bottom. Ta-da! <laughs> this looks real weird so far, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't worry, we can do it. All right. Now her legs are kind of like two rectangles. So that's what I'm gonna draw next. Gotta move my book out of the way so you can see, huh? So one, two. That's starting to look right, huh? We're getting there. And then her feet are also like two rectangles. Now, if you're drawing it with pencil, that's probably a good idea. I'm doing it with the marker so you guys can see it better, but it, I'll use paint and it'll cover up my lines. But if you're using a pencil, it's a really good idea to draw very lightly. Don't press real hard with your pencil because then if you make a mistake or if you draw some extra lines that you don't need, you can just erase them. And everybody makes mistakes. Every artist makes mistakes, even Mr. Paul, all the time. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to draw another rectangle for this arm. About like that. Okay. And one for this arm. Looking pretty cute. I'm getting excited about this. <laughs> All right, now I'll just do a little rectangle or kind of a square. For the hands. <laughs> I 
And now the fun part, I'm going to draw all of these balloons. You can draw as many balloons as you want. I'm just going to start, and the balloons are, of course, are ovals. So I'm just going to draw some big ovals. And if you notice, see how some of the balloons are in front of other balloons? That's a really good thing to do in a piece of art. That's called overlap. Whatever is in front of something else is overlapping that balloon. So this balloon is overlapping that one. And when you have lots of things going on in a drawing or a painting and they start overlapping each other, that makes it look more realistic. So it's a good thing to do. And the way you do it is just draw the first one and then draw another one coming out of the side so you don't see all the rest of that oval you just kind of see it tucked back behind that first one does that make sense and you can just draw as many up here as you want i keep wanting to draw more i'm running out of room here i'll have, i'll have one going off the page too because that's also a fun artist trick when you're, when you're making a picture, if you draw something that we only get to see part of and it goes off the page, it, it kind of makes it look like there's more to the scene than what we're showing. So it makes the person who's looking at your artwork have to use their imagination. And that's a good thing. So sometimes it's fun to just show a little part of something like that. All right, now I'm gonna draw the little tie part of the balloons, at least the ones that we can see. Okay, you know how when you tie a balloon, you get that little triangle shape. And then from each one of those, I'm gonna draw the string going down to her hand. And even though we don't see the bottom of that one, we know it needs to have a string. So if you have some balloons that are hiding back behind, you might not see where the string connects to it. But the good thing to do is to just count your balloons and then count the number of strings and then make sure that it matches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whew. Got it right. <laughs> but if I didn't, you can always add more. <laughs> Hi to everybody that's joining us. So glad to see everybody. This is really the highlight of my week, getting to hang out with all of you guys and make art together. So thank you for hanging out and coming coming every Friday. This is the 12th week we've done this. That's a lot of art days with Mr. Paul. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to draw just a few details of her face. I'm going to draw some eyes. And you probably have your own way of drawing faces. You draw it your way and you can make it look like whoever you want. You could make it look like yourself or your friend, whatever you like, but I'm gonna do two eyes, eyebrow, and then a little nose and a mouth. And of course, I'm gonna make her smiling. I'm gonna give her a little ear and then if you look in the picture here, she's got her hair kind of pulled back in this headband. So that's what I'm going to, that's how I'm going to do mine. I'm going to draw some hair in front and then I'm going to turn this into the hair band, put a little flower in it like that. And then instead of having this be a perfect oval, I'm just going to make the outer edge a little bit more, look more like real hair. And we can make that even better when we paint it too. But we don't want her to have like an egg head. <laughs> that wouldn't be good, would it? <laughs> okay, let's do a few more little details. I'm gonna make these rectangles a little bit rounder now so they look more like shoes. So when you start out with basic shapes, then you go back and you figure out how to make each one of those simple shapes look more like the real shape that you were drawing. And, and it's a really easy way. It helps you to just understand, you know, I'm drawing some little rectangles, little openings in her. They look like maybe Crocs or something. <laughs> um, but it's a, drawing the simple shapes is an easy way for you to really feel like you can just draw anything and not get too caught up in the details too soon. All right, now let's turn this little rectangle into a hand. So I'm gonna draw a thumb on top. And how many fingers? 
One, two, three, four. Five if you count the thumb. So we've got the thumb already. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Beautiful hand. Okay. And now on this side, because her hand is holding the strings like this, we're going to see those fingers, but they're going to go this way. One, two, three, four. And then this one on here on top is her thumb. I'm also just going to draw some loose strings down here. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Usually the strings are real tight up here and then they can just be kind of loose down below. All right, now let's, I'm going to give her some socks. These are all, you can put, you can change the outfit. You can draw whatever you guys want. Remember, don't feel like you have to copy mine, but I'll put some little polka dots. I like pattern. And then I'm going to do a few stripes on her dress. Okay, draw the little neck for it. And one. I think that's good. Okay, now I'm going to just make her arm look a little bit more like an arm. So it usually gets, comes in a little bit at the elbow. So it's thicker elbow thicker thinner like that okay see just like mine thicker i mean mine's not too thick <laughs> i don't have big muscles but it's a little thicker then it gets skinnier where the elbow is then it gets thicker again and then it gets skinny so thick thin thick thin <laughs> you got it you can make you can give her big muscles if you want <laughs> you can do anything. All right, I think that's enough details. Now, how are your drawings coming? Are they coming along good? You take your time. If you're still working on it, you don't have to be done just because I'm ready to start coloring. I'm going to set my picture down there so I can look at it without getting any paint on my book. Now, let me show you guys. Before I started the video, I, I put out all the colors because I like using oil paint. That's what I use a lot. That's what's easy for me to grab. So that's what I'm going to color mine with. But you, you, like I said, you use whatever you want. But I thought it would be kind of neat for you guys to see how I mix colors. A lot of times for these videos, I'll mix the colors up ahead of time. But today I'm going to mix them right now so you guys can watch. And the first color I want to mix is a good color for her skin. So I've got this really dark brown and I'm going to put a little bit of this lighter brown in it. This is called a palette knife by the way. This is what artists use to mix colors with. You can even use it to paint with. Sometimes on some of my canvases I'll actually use this instead of a paintbrush which is really fun. But you just scoop up a little color and you add it in, see, and mix together and then you get a brand new color. That looks pretty good. In fact, let's see. Now I'm going to lighten it up just a smidge more. Not too much though. There, I like that. That's the fun thing about color mixing when you just keep going until you get it where you want it. And I, I sometimes I can spend 20 minutes just sitting here mixing up a whole bunch of colors before I even start painting. But I'm going to start with just that one for now and then I'll mix more as I need them. Okay, so I'm going to start, let me pick out the right brush. I'm going to start by painting in her skin with that color that we just made. Yeah, I like that. It's beautiful. Okay, so I was thinking about that book that I just read to you guys and it made me think a lot about when I was a kid because there was a long time when I was growing up when I really did not believe in myself very much. Because what happened when I was in about fourth grade, I had to switch schools and I started going to this school where I just did not fit in. I could not, I had such a hard time making friends. 
I just was really different. I liked art. Everybody else was interested in sports. I didn't like the same music as everybody else. I just, I didn't fit in. They thought I was, I was really tall and awkward. And so anyway, I did not have a lot of confidence in myself because I just really had a hard time at school. And I had a wonderful art teacher who taught me to believe in myself, even though I had such a hard time at school making friends. She taught me how I could take all of those feelings and put them into a painting. And that gave me so much confidence. So I wanted to just share that story with all of you guys. You probably see me on here each week and you see how confident I am now, right? I'm a pretty confident dude. <laughs> I, I'm very proud of being an artist. I don't have any problem with being on, you know, a live stream like this and making art in front of people. And I love being, being social and everything. But if you knew me when I was a kid, I would have been terrified to do this because I would have been afraid I would do something wrong and everybody would make fun of me. So as I grew up, because I was learning to be proud of myself for being an artist, that gave me confidence in all the other areas of my life. So if you sometimes have trouble believing in yourself, I just want you to remember the story that I read to you guys today. And I want you to know that you can do anything if you believe in yourself and you're the only one who can make that decision there, no matter what anybody says to you, if people call you names, if people are mean, you have to be, you have to believe in yourself because I believe in each one of you. I think that you guys are all amazing, awesome, wonderful people, so talented, so creative. So, and, and you can literally do anything. So don't let, ever let anybody tell you otherwise. Deal? <laughs> and if you ever doubt that, you just send me a message and I'll remind you how awesome you are. <laughs> All right. I guess I should probably focus on painting a little more instead of talking. <laughs> but I do like chatting with you guys. I really do. I think you are all so, so cool. It takes some pretty special young people to spend their time watching videos like this, making art when, when you could be doing, you know, so many other things. I think that that makes you guys all really, really special. In fact, since we're talking about you guys being special, <laughs> I wanted to tell you the next thing that I was thinking about for this picture. Um, since, she is holding all of these different balloons. I thought that it would be really cool if we made each balloon represent something that you are proud of about yourself. Okay. I'm going to do that too. So I need to come up with six different things. And when I'm ready to paint the balloons, I'm going to actually think about that thing and choose a color that goes with it. And then I'm going to even write the word in the balloon. That way I will be sure to remember. Because sometimes we all need a little confidence boost. So you can always look at this picture and remember all the things that are awesome about you. Okay? I know, hopefully you drew even more than six balloons because I know that for each one of you, there, you have more awesome things about you than that. In fact, if you need to add more balloons, you can. <laughs> I'm going to just stick with six for me because I don't, you know, can't be here all day, unfortunately. But you add all the balloons you want. And each balloon, just start thinking, it's going to represent something that you are proud of about yourself. Something that makes you awesome. Okay. All right, let me finish up her skin. Let's see here. 
the nice thing about this paint that I use, it really just covers up all the lines that I don't want people to see. And then I can leave the ones that I do like. paint each finger and let's see a little bit of her legs okay all right now I'm going to paint her dress orange you use whatever color you want, remember. It is all up to you. But I like bright orange, so that's what I'm going to use. I tend to like a lot of bright colors. <laughs> if you ever... Sometime I'll have to show you guys some of my paintings. Because I haven't shared a whole lot of them with you besides the ones that I paint with you during the videos. But I've got a bunch of paintings around here that are all... That I've painted all, over, all through the years. And the one thing they all have in common is they are very colorful. <laughs> I love color. By the way, did you guys know that there is a really awesome concert happening tomorrow night, Saturday night? It's a benefit concert for Palenque Arts. And you can watch it online. The performer is Tammy Brown, and I know that there, there's other performers, other things happening too. You can go onto the Palenque Arts Facebook page where you're watching me right now and find out all the details about it and how to watch it, how to get involved. Um, and I encourage everybody, I'll be watching, you guys watch, we'll all watch together. We can hang out again this week, so two times in the same week we get to hang out. That'll be awesome. So Saturday night, don't miss it. Just go to the Palenque Arts page to get all the details because I don't remember everything off the top of my head and I don't want to tell you wrong. <laughs> but just go, go to the Palenque Arts Facebook page. It's really going to be great. I guarantee that. Mr. Juan has been working super hard to get it all put together for you guys. Okay. Okay, just about done with that. <laughs> okay. Oh, one more. Almost forgot. <laughs> All right, now what? I think I'll do the stripes on her dress blue. And do you know why I picked blue? Well, for one thing, it's a pretty color. <laughs> That's a good enough reason right there. Got to find a good brush too. Um, here we go. The other reason I picked blue is because blue is the opposite of orange. Have you ever seen a color wheel? We, we made one in one of our previous uh, videos, so if you, didn't, if you missed that one, you can always go to the Palenque Arts YouTube channel and watch the old videos. But a color wheel has all the colors of the rainbow in a circle, and the colors that are opposite each other are called complementary colors, and those colors look really good together. So if you're trying to pick out colors, in a painting or in a drawing, look, thinking about the color wheel and complementary colors is a really good way to do it. Okay. There's one stripe. Two more to go. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, when I was a kid, like I said, I had a hard time fitting in at school. And I can remember every day during recess, I, I didn't like recess because that was a time when there was a lot of like bullying that happened for me. So I would go and sit on the steps beside the school and I would just go sit up there and I liked to read and draw and just do things kind of more by myself because I didn't really fit in. I didn't have like really good friends there. And so that was the first painting that I made after my art teacher said I should start making some paintings about how I felt. I made a painting of myself sitting there on the steps beside the school. And one of the things that I noticed when I made that painting and I was really thinking about all those emotions that I felt, it really helped. It made me feel a lot better to get all of those emotions out. So whenever you're going through something difficult in your life, whatever it might be, everybody has different challenges that they have to deal with as they grow up. Whatever's going on, I would encourage you to make art about it. And it doesn't just have to be visual art like this. Some art, some artists write like poetry or um, stories, anything you want. Some artists are musicians and write songs about how they're feeling. Some artists are actors or they write plays. Um, whatever creative outlet you want works the same, but it helps you to get all those feelings and put them out somewhere. Get it, get them out of your head. Yeah, so that's something that I still do today. Whenever I have something hard to deal with, the first thing I do is I come up here and I make a painting about it. And that always seems to help me figure out what I need to do. I would encourage you guys to do the same thing. Whatever your creative, whatever your favorite creative outlet is. And you don't need to worry about making it perfect. People worry way too much about perfect. Perfect doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is getting it out. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you want to express, just make, just make something. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks of it. Oh, this is starting to look really cool. How's, how are yours coming along? I cannot wait to see them. So remember, once you finish, if you're allowed to, post them on social media or have your parents post them and tag us at Palenque Arts so we can see all of your beautiful artwork. I look forward to that every single week. It's really, really awesome to know that there are so many cool artists out there all making art together. We're just like a big art family. And I would also encourage you to hang up your artwork if you're allowed to. Put it up in your room, on the refrigerator, <laughs> wherever you can so that you and everybody else can see all of your awesome work. You don't just want to hide it away somewhere. You got to show it off. Yeah. I had to switch to a tiny brush. All right. Oh. Had some more hair hiding in there. I almost forgot. <laughs> okay. We're getting there. She's looking good. What next? I'm going to go back to my blue and give her some blue socks. I think I have some socks just like this blue with white polka dots. <laughs> Because my love for color also carries over into my wardrobe. Today I'm dressed kind of a little bit more normal, but usually my clothes have bright, um, fun patterns on them. 
I'm sure by the time I'm done painting, I'll have paint all over this anyway, so it'll be bright and colorful soon. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Almost done with her, and then we get to do the balloons. I think I'm going to give her pink shoes. So I'm just going to take a little red and add a little white. Oh, I guess you probably couldn't see that too well, but that's how you make pink. Is just by mixing red and white together. You can also mix colors if you're using colored pencils or crayons. You just layer them, layer one color on top of another, and then the two colors will combine. You can do that with watercolor, um, all kinds of different mediums. So if you've never mixed colors before, you should give it a try. It's a lot of fun. You can, even if you only have like, you know, six or seven colors in your crayon box, you could actually make hundreds of colors out of that. Okay. And we'll make her little hair bow match. She seems like somebody that would be very color coordinated. <laughs> okay, now it's balloon time. So have you all been thinking about what you want each balloon to represent? I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to get a bigger brush now. And let's see. I'll do the first balloon. Purple. Right here. And remember, each balloon represents something that you are proud of about yourself. And it's okay to be proud of yourself. Being proud of yourself doesn't mean that you think that you're better than everybody else. It, do it doesn't mean that you have, you know, a big ego. Being proud of yourself just means that you know that you are special and talented and that you have something important to offer. And I hope that every single person feels that way. All right, so my first one that I'm going to do, I'm going to write the word in there so that I will definitely remember it. Um, one of the things that I am proud of about myself is being an artist. You guys could all use that one too if you wanted to. But come up with your own too, whatever you want. Artist. Even if you don't know how to spell a word, that's okay to you. Just spell it the best you can. And write it in whatever language you want, too. If you know how to say the word in several languages, you could put it in several languages. That would be neat. Whatever you guys want. It's your artwork. I keep saying that, but I, I think it's important for everybody to remember. There's no right, right or wrong way to make a piece of art. All right, so that's the first one. Artist. All right, next I'm going to do a red one. For that one, I am going to write that I am kind. Like I'm kind to people. I try to be anyway. Okay, that's two. What next? What colors are left? Oh, I see a good one here. I love turquoise. I'm going to put some turquoise on there. Okay. All right, 
there we go and for that one let's see what else what's something else that i'm proud of about myself i'm gonna say i i'm gonna write care because i care about other people Okay, that's three balloons. Three more to go. <laughs> are you coming up with some good words for your balloons? What are the things that you are the most proud of about yourself? You might have to think about it maybe for a minute. That's okay. Think about it as you're coloring them. I know that each one of you has many, many, many things that I am proud of about you. So I hope you're proud of those things too. Okay, what is something else that I'm proud of about myself? I think I'm going to write creative because I am very creative. So that can go right there. Have to write a little smaller. <laughs> running out of room okay we're getting there two more i can't wait to see what words you guys wrote on yours i'm excited about that all right, I'll do this one blue. Okay. And on that one, I'm going to write nice because I try to be nice to everybody that I meet. And then last one. I can't believe this picture is already almost done. I feel like we just started. This time goes by so fast. I guess that's just because we have fun hanging out together, huh? Time, time flies when you're having fun. Also, time tends to go really fast for me when I'm doing anything creative. It just seems like I could sit here and 10 hours could go by and I, in, in no time. It's crazy. All right, the last word I'm going to write is, it's going to maybe get a little cut off, but I'll try to fit it, uh, fun. Because I like to have fun and I try to have fun, do something fun every single day. and. I think some people think that I'm pretty fun. I think I'm fun. <laughs> I hope you do too. So those are my words. Nice, kind, artist, care, creative, and fun. So those are six things that I'm proud of about myself. And I hope that you guys come up with some, so many words, more words than you could even fit on a piece of paper because you are all so awesome. I mean that, really. So thank you again to the wonderful author Grace Byers for this book that we read, I Believe I Can. I enjoyed sharing that with all of you and I had so much fun, like always, hanging out and making art together. It is so great to see you guys. I look forward to seeing all of your artwork when you share it. Take your time. You don't have to be finished just because I am. You can keep going all evening if you want to. <laughs> you can just paint and draw, make art all day long. And if you've missed any of the other videos, there are, this is the 12th one now. Like I said, you can see them all on the Palenque Arts YouTube channel. So you can watch all the old ones and do, do anything that you might have missed. All kinds of art projects waiting for you guys. I hope that you have a wonderful, creative, artsy week. <laughs> and I hope that you always remember to believe in yourself 
as much as Mr. Paul believes in each one of you. All right, until next time, have a great week. Make some art, take care. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.